Hi, and welcome to a short yoga session to make your hips happy. Now, we're going to start out actually lying on our backs. So, and assuming the position of happy baby. Ah, so draw your knees up towards your chest. And then can you reach inside and take hold of your insteps. Then bring your ankles directly over your knees. Now I realize some of you may find that you can't quite get there because your hamstrings are tight. Tell you why, too much sitting around in chairs. And if you manage to spend a little more time even sitting on the floor while you're watching your Netflix, you will begin to loosen the things that have gotten tight while you're sitting in chairs, like your hamstrings, like your hips, your lower back. So if you're unable to grab your insteps, can you just grab your ankles? You want your knees outside of your torso as well. Maybe you find it easier to take hold of your insteps from outside of the foot. You have that option. And just breathe in. And are getting some nice compression here. Do what you can to try to have your ankles and knees aligned and know that you are starting to stretch and we're going to also strengthen the 22 muscles that support your hip joint. Now your hip joint is your femur, longest bone in your body, that fits into a little cup called the acetabulum in your uh, on your hip bone. All right, so that will do for your happy baby. Now we're going to do something called thread the needle. So you're going to place your right ankle on top of your left knee. Your left leg is bent. Now bring your left knee towards you. This is how they, this is why they call it thread the needle. Some people call this supine uh, pigeon pose. Call it what you like, but clasp your fingers around the back of your thigh. If it's available to you, bring your, because some of us have longer arms, some of us have shorter arms. Don't know why that happened, but that's what we got in this lifetime, so we got to work with what we have. And if you're able to keep your shoulder blades flat on the floor, while you take hold of the front of your knee, great. But there's no prizes, doesn't matter if you can only get your uh, fingers around the back, that's just great. And then pull the knee towards you. Clearly you can feel the stretch going on in your right hip, so breathe into that area. We're gonna hold each pose for a few seconds because that's how the muscles get the message to relax, to let go of tension and stress, whether it's from poor posture, sitting too long, being inactive, whatever it is, before you get active, it's always a great idea to stretch things out. Okay, so Let's place the feet with the knees bent flat on the floor and just feel how that right hip feels. You can feel energy, you can feel chi, life force flowing through the area. Let's do the other side, placing the left ankle on top of the right knee. Once again, draw the right knee towards you. Start with your fingers interlocked behind your right thigh. Now, of course, you're stretching your left hip. And check it out. Maybe you can bring your fingers around to the front of your right bent leg. 
Don't do too much. Don't do too little. Practice with awareness, respect, and compassion for exactly where your body is today. So one of the reasons that we work on our hips is because when we walk, clearly we have to transfer the weight. And at one point, all the weight will be on one hip. So you want stretched and strengthened muscles to support that hip joint. Joints without muscles, ligaments, and tendons are completely unstable. So it's not about strengthening any bones here. That you do with your diet. And green leafy vegetables are full of calcium. I know they talk about dairy all the time. Um, yes, a certain amount of dairy, but too much dairy becomes acidic. It will leach your bones of the very uh, alkalizing minerals that you need. That's a whole other subject, but your green leafy vegetables, really, you need those. They provide the best minerals for to keeping your bones strong. All righty, let's untangle from that little posture and then bring the soles of the feet together and let your knees splay out. Now, if you feel you need support, if you have blocks, you can place those underneath the knees or the thighs. Uh, I don't require, but bringing the soles of the feet together in supine Baddha stretches the inner uh, thighs, your adductor muscles. It also gently opens the hips by externally rotating them. There's a gentle stretch here for your knees. And this posture also nourishes our reproductive organs and glands, ovaries, prostate. And then finally, if all that wasn't enough, it actually has a calming effect for people who might be experiencing some mild depression, anxiety. And again, this is a short class. So if any of these issues exist in your tissues, then put this video on pause. Spend a little extra time in uh, positions that will nourish and give your body the time that it needs to release that which is not serving you. Typically, what's in our tissues was not just put there 10 minutes ago. It could have been put there 10 or 20 years ago. And all people and generations and time have lived through different stressors. So we can't avoid stress in our lives, but yoga, breathing and allowing the earth to lyric energy to nourish and support us while we're releasing is very helpful. But you have to practice in order to receive the benefits and sometimes spend a little bit longer to get more benefits. So let's draw the knees together now and then bring the knees up towards the uh, chest. And then I love this little twist just because it opens up and releases the lower back. And clearly the lower back, the hips and the thighs, they're all connected. So. Glue your knees, your thighs, and your feet together and gently let your knees fall over towards the left side. Turn your head to the right and please keep your right shoulder on the floor. Not just the shoulder blade, but the shoulder itself. And just hang out here because most of us will have floating knees. And then inhale, bring back to center. Just bringing some gentle warmth and mobility into that lower back 
rolling on your sacrum and allowing your knees to fall over to the right and let your head gently roll to the left. Breathing, inhaling, knees back to center, exhaling, knees to the left, head to the right, slow. Notice your core engaging. You'll only notice that if you're slow. Inhale, come back to center with your knees and your head. And last time, gently let your knees open over to the right, head to the left. Please keep those knees together, releasing tension, any kind of stress from the lower back and the sacral area. And then inhale, come back to center. Remember, things like fear, anxiety, they're all stored in the back of the body. So when we stretch and release from the back, we're releasing some of those things. Bring your hands underneath the backs of your thighs and rock up. All righty. So come on over onto your knees, curl your toes under, and let yourself just hang for a moment in a gentle bent knee, soft forward fold, and then keeping your chin tucked into your chest. Slowly roll up one vertebra at a time and let your head be the last thing to come up. Okay, so just before we do a little short vinyasa, when you just hang out normally, and I'm looking at my tech guy right now, and it's interesting because I'm looking down at his feet and his feet are turned out. So you know what that tells me? <laughs> he just reversed it to this. But when your feet are turned out like this, it generally represents a little bit of tightness in the hips. So just check out what it feels like to have your feet parallel to one another. Or pontoons as he likes to call my feet. <laughs> I have good balance, I have big feet. Okay, so, you know, next time you get into an art gallery or you're waiting at a bank or a grocery store while the clerk charges you all the wrong prices for all the sales stuff you picked up, you got to watch them. <laughs> See if you can think about standing like this, okay? This is ergonomically better for your hips to have your feet parallel. It means that your ankles, your knees, and your hips are in alignment. And we want to protect what we have because replacing a leg, can't do that yet. Alrighty, so we're just going to do a little bit of work now to strengthen those muscles. So come on up towards the front of your mat and then bend your knees, sit back in your heels. Just come into a soft Utkatasana and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up, place your hands on your thighs. Exhale, bring your fingers to the floor and step your left knee back. Now, let's bring the left hand up, stretching here. And if you drop the toes and flatten the top of your foot, you'll find that easier on your knee. So we're stretching over towards the bent knee side, the right knee side. And then let's bring our left hand pardon me, right hand to the outside of the right foot, and then reach the other arm up. So gentle little stretches for the hips, and then bring the hands down, curl the toes under of the back leg, take the other foot back, come into your downward facing dog, and just gently walk your dog. Walking your dog, so one leg is straight, one is bent. Okay, and either walk, or jump your feet up to the front and forward fold, bend your knees, inhale, sweep the arms up, exhale, hands in prayer. And let's try Utkatasana one more time, strengthening the muscles around the hip joint, exhale, forward fold, inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back, Exhale, and now step your left leg back, draw the knee to the mat. And now we'll bring the uh, 
stretching with the left arm over. Pardon me, my right arm. Good grief. Right arm over. And then lower the left arm down, reaching up and stretching up. Feel that stretch through the glutes, through the hips. And bring the hand down. Curl the back toes under and press back up into downward facing dog. So walking your dog. And then let's stretch our hip flexors in downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up. Tip it over to the left side. Look under your armpit. Have a look at your foot if you can. And back down. Other leg up, tip it over to the opposite side, look under your arm, the other armpit, have a look for your foot. Ha. Ah. And come back to center. And then walk your hands towards your feet. Have your feet close together, come back one more time into Utkatasana, horseman's pose. Exhale, forward fold. Come on down onto your knees. Step your left foot forward. Have your knee over your ankle. Bring your right hand to the outside of your left knee. Place the other hand on top in the mirror image. Curl your toes under and then lift your back knee off the floor. So again, we're strengthening as we stretch those 22 muscles that support the largest joint in your body, the hip. And releasing. Step back into down dog. We're going to do the other side. I'm going to turn around so you can see me if you're watching. Come on down onto your knees. Step your right foot forward. Curl the toes under of the back. Bring your left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Inter, um, bring your hands into prayer, the mirror image. Focus your gaze for balance, lifting the back knee off the floor and twisting as much as you can. Strengthening the right hip joint, muscles, ligaments, tendons. And you're stretching the hip flexor on the back. Yay. And you're smiling and breathing. Nice. Okay. Bring the hands to the floor. Your last doggy. And now come down onto your knees and come back down onto the floor one more time. Keep your knees bent, arms beside your body. We're just going to do our bridge pose and give one final stretch to our hip flexors and strengthening for the hip. So palms face down, arms beside the body. Press the small of the back into the floor. Peel your spine off the floor, pressing up, lifting up as high as you can. There are a myriad of benefits, but this is our tune-up for happy hips. Breathe. Feel those muscles working in concert like an orchestra. I mean, when our body's working for us, we feel like singing, humming, dancing. We just feel happier when all of our moving parts can work together to support us in whatever it is that we do and love in life. Because it's not a dress rehearsal. Every day, it's full on, it's real, it's happening, and you want to be there for it and enjoy it. And then slowly release your torso back on to your mats. Draw your knees one more time and let's just make a few circles. This is like the cherry on top of the sundae because it's a, like a self-massage. 
and you know when you get a massage, the benefits uh, for your immune system alone are enormous. So if you haven't had a massage, think about it. This is a great time of year, the winter time, to make sure that everything is optimized in terms of your health. Ah, and then bring your hands underneath the backs of your thighs, rock up to a seated position, and you may find that sitting cross-legged is getting easier and better. Thanks so much for being here. Namaste.